Despite creating a powerhouse film industry, comics still have a lot of fallbacks. Hey guys, Noah from WatchMojo here, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 problems with comics fans ignore. You read these in your spare time? Oh yeah, Charles, we got ourselves an X-Men fan. For this list, we're looking at the downsides to the colorful world of comics as both an art form and a business. We're basing our picks on troublesome narratives, financial dilemmas, and the hurdles that bother fans just as much as newcomers. It was an imaginary story dreamt by Jimmy Olsen after he was kicked in the head by Supergirl's horse, Comet. It never really happened. None of these things ever really happened. Get out of my store. Number 10, Prices. I bet it's worth a million bucks. It is, my lad. But I let you have it for a hundred because you remind me of me. Hmm. All I got is 30. Then you cannot have it. But I must. With the amount of ink that goes into comics, a single issue usually costs between three and four dollars. For the meager 22 pages that you get at this price, many readers can finish a comic in under 20 minutes. Though there's a lot more color involved than a normal novel, plenty of ads fill the pages too. Dr. Boohoo, your tears have smudged Wolverine's iconic sideburns. Hence you must buy this comic. Since self-contained stories are rare as well, readers are generally on the hook for multiple comics at a time. Variant covers offer unique art, but retailers often charge at least double the normal retail price for them. For fans still committed to buying physical comics, the bill is unfairly high for what you get out of it. Until this moment, I never knew why God put me on this earth, but now I know to buy that comic book. Your motion is out of place here, son. Number nine, digital can be just as pricey. Let's talk business. Publishers like DC and Marvel save a lot on printing and shipping when they sell digital comics, but they don't always pass this on to consumers. Amazon's Comixology app usually charges the store price for comics without any physical product to show for it. There's also no guarantee users keep access to comics if Comixology goes out of business. Can I return it if it doesn't fit? It always fits. Eventually. While Marvel Unlimited offers a more robust and thorough access to their back catalog, you're always a few months behind what's on the shelves. Sometimes it leads to very little, and it seems like it's not worth it. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. Given how narrow the savings on digital comics are already, publishers nickel and dime you far too often on extras. All you care about is money. This town deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to them. Number eight, the silly merch. And I swore off dairy, but then Ben and Jerry's named a flavor after me, so. Stark raving hazelnuts. Not Ben. A bit chalky. A hunk of Hulk burning fudge is our favorite. That's a thing. Collectibles and toys give fans a tangible version of their heroes, but there are hundreds of items just trying to cash in on comics. Turning your superhero alter ego, Ozymandias, into a billion dollar industry. Toys, lunch boxes, genetic engineering. I understand there's even a movie in the works. Products like Joker underwear shamelessly turn characters into commercial entities and rarely fit thematically with their source material. Mr. Moore, will you sign my DVD of Watchmen Babies? Which of the babies is your favorite? This kind of merchandise takes away from how seriously we see heroes and saturates our exposure to them as a whole. Between all the waffle makers, beard combs, and lewd water guns, licensed products make fans pay a premium for their fandom too. Though there's no shame in showing love to comic books, most merch is just too costly and gaudy. You see what those bloody corporations do? They take your ideas and they suck them. Suck them like leeches until they've gotten every last drop of the marrow from your bones. Number seven, artists remain fairly underpaid. Do you know anyone who works at Batman? Cause I really want to draw Batman. While the art is what sets comics apart from books and films, drawing work barely pays the bills. Artists earn anywhere from $30 to just under $300 for a page, which can take hours to complete depending on their role. It's also rare for illustrators to work full-time for one company, which means many of them are forced to take on multiple jobs. League of Extraordinary Freelancers, activate! Pencilers on major series often sustain their rent with commissions, magazine illustrations, and other work. While there are a few people earning good money for their work, most artists struggle to move up in the industry. With demanding work lives and little to show for it, it's a wonder anyone is still drawing comics. Is that a meteor heading for the Earth? Uh, maybe, but tonight there's a benefit for underpaid comic book artists of the 40s and 50s. To the cash bar. Number six, villain deaths and returns. 
He's been dead for years. First correction, I am Swiss. Second, look around you. I have never been more alive. No matter how many times the Avengers defeat Ultron or Doctor Doom, they just keep coming back. Big villains like Thanos get massive story arcs to heighten drama and lend weight to their eventual demise. After so much emphasis is put on their crimes and defeat, resurrecting a big baddie just cheapens what death means in their world. Reviving Baron Zemo through family or Red Skull with a mind transfer also leads to a lot of redundant narratives. Tell that to the dead. The living are not done with you yet. Fans rarely protest with their wallets, however, which only encourages the practice to continue. Given how many characters exist in superhero canon, publishers recycle their evildoers far too often. We all think that at first. We are all wrong. Number five, inaccessibility. God, we haven't caught up in a spell, have we? No. Oh. The Avengers broke up. We're toast. Broke up? Like a band? Like, like the Beatles? If you find the Marvel Cinematic Universe hard to follow, there's about 80 years of comics to consider as well. With such a massive backlog of stories and characters, trying to get into comics is daunting to say the least. Though there are occasional events like DC's New 52, it's rare to see initiatives by publishers to bring in new readers. Finding an entry point isn't easy either, as any one series is constantly changing what's considered canon. The high costs and complex ordering systems are also big investments for a newcomer. Who's Scott? Ant-Man. There's an Ant-Man and a Spider-Man? While digital platforms and graphic novels can help you adjust to the format, comics still have too many barriers to entry. Number 4. Flooding the Market – Saturation Aww, All these new superheroes suck! None of them can hold a candle to Radioactive Man. The only decent new one is Radiation Dude. Nah, he's just a cheap imitation of Radioactive Man. Explain! The similarities are subtle, but many. With movies, merchandise, TV shows, games, and even novels coming out about superheroes, the genre is quite full of content to say the least. Over 400 comic series release every month in North America, which makes it impossible to follow everything. What about Thor? Off-world. Okay, um, Doctor Strange. Unavailable. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. It's easy to burn out on certain heroes as well, given that legacy heroes like Spider-Man often have at least three ongoing series at any time. Publishers have had to reduce their output in recent years as their growing bodies of work exceed demand. As much as we love reading comics, there's simply too much to read. I frolic and I dance and I do this with my okay, pants and my- Okay, enough! Number three, tie-ins, events. It can't be! It's as if Superman moved to Gotham City! Which he did in World's Finest Comics number 94! See? A crossover event is an amazing way to bring heroes together, but the payoff isn't always worth the hype. Save... Martha! Though there are a lot of interesting premises, many stories go on too long or end rather abruptly. There are also dozens of tie-ins for each event that go from intriguing to exhausting for readers to keep track of. That feels like an oversimplification. I'm putting together a team, people with special abilities. You see, I believe enemies are coming. Stop right there. I'm in. You are? Crossover comics generally cost more too, despite the fact that they're becoming relatively common in the industry. Publishers are pretty erratic with how many consequences these stories carry on as well. For all the time and money events demand from fans, there are just too many risks to buy them all at release. I've killed things from other worlds before. She with you? I thought she was with you. Number two, reboots. Alan Moore, you wrote my favorite issues of Radioactive Man! Sometimes a reboot is the only way to keep a classic hero alive, though that doesn't mean they'll come back like you remember. A new creative team will change a comic one way or another, and they're infamous for taking out characters that fans love. But Besides, we want to stay as far away from the campy 70s version as possible. Billowing backpacks, Radioactive Man! It's the worst villain of them all! The Scoutmaster! Additional switches in art style, writing, and overall tone can transform series into something completely different, too. Reboots discourage publishers from creating new heroes, while leaving previous readers feeling alienated. Superman dies, Aquaman dies, Casper dies, Caveman Robin, Black Robin, Born Again Robin. Writers will even retcon beloved comics to fit a new series. While restarting a comic can give a starting point for new readers, it risks losing the people who care, too. <gasps> Whoa! The infamous Wolverine comic with pop-out claws! Why was this so controversial? <laughs> 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, repetitive storylines. I saved a bunch of people, fell in love, saved the city. And then I saved the city again, and again, and again, and again. Readers get tired of seeing the same stories play out again. Take, for example, the trend of villains who are just evil opposites of their heroes. Plot devices like clones, time travel, and mind control have become so common that they're predictable these days. With so many similar origin stories, new characters get old faster and faster, too. Reboots of iconic heroes are also guilty of repeating family deaths and major battles in their own series. Wow. With great power comes Don't great... Don't you dare finish that sentence. Don't do it. More than anything, this kind of writing just makes comics more boring to read as a whole. Though there's only so many ways to tell a story, fans still deserve more originality in their comics. You see, I saved the city, fell in love, I got married, saved the city some more, maybe too much. My marriage got testy, made some dicey money choices. Don't invest in a spider-themed restaurant. So what do you guys think? What is the biggest problem with comics nowadays? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like and subscribe to Watch Mojo, and be sure to check out more great content right here.